Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel, it's Chernovsky here, and today we're going to be talking about Mad Viking Games. First off, I want to say I'm not a financial advisor. If you are investing, it's your choice, it's your decision, so do your own research. Next, if you do like this content, please hit the subscribe and like button, it really does help. Last, I want to say thank you so much to this community, Mad Viking Games community especially, Price Chat, everyone out there, VFAM, you guys are amazing. Thank you for your support, it really doesn't go unnoticed. Now, let's dive into this video. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about development update number 9. But before I jump into development number 9, um, I do want to remind everyone to please join the Mad Viking Games Discord and their Telegram. These are some great places that have some valuable resources of information and they also allow you to have some access to the developers of the game and you might be able to sneak in some questions that they are willing to answer. Also, these places are a great resource for announcements and updates for Mad Viking Games. Plus, the community here is pretty fun, they're lively, and they always want to try and help out wherever they can. If they can help out, they'll try and guide you in the right direction, or sometimes what they'll do is they'll guide you to this facts section, because here is where you can really find the meat of the information for Mad Viking Games. Their website, don't get me wrong, is amazing. Uh, their telegram is amazing, but I just feel like this is a nice one-stop shop for the finer details that you want to know, like how staking works, the chess, the NFTs, all that good stuff, that meat, right? Um, you could also find those places on the Medium, the website, and their telegram, but um, I personally just like the Discord because I think it's a, a wonderful place to be, and the community here is absolutely fantastic. All right, so without further ado, enough about uh, the Discord. Uh, let's dive into this development update. Um, there's some hidden gems in here for the development update I do want to talk about. So first off, they are always mentioning about how excited they are to work on the game and how happy they are for reaching goals that they set for themselves. So they're always working on these, these characters. They're always working on the coding and all the mechanics. So we should expect that to be happening in all of these updates. Now let's talk about specifically what they said about the open world. So to everybody, I do want to remind you the open world is still fairly new and they're going to be doing a lot of the coding. They're going to be doing a lot of the um, creations and stuff like that. So just want to remind everybody that whenever we talk about the open world, it's still in those early stages. Okay. But without further ado, let's let's dive into this. So they're doing some coding for inventory and objects for the NFTs. Awesome. So they're going to have, we're, if there's going to be an inventory, does that mean we're going to have backpacks and we're going to store goods or we're going to be storing pots? We're going to be storing materials to craft. What does that mean, right? So they're doing inventories and stuff like that. So that's really cool to see because it, it opens up the door to so many different avenues, right? create a couple initial objects for these characters. So I'm sure they're just testing out how objects work and they're just putting out some of these basic um, items or objects in the game that the characters can kind of play around with. Now we do have characters for the game already because if you remember in the AMAs and discussions before, these NFT characters from the first game and Gen 1 would be allowed to be used in both games. So they're going to be able to try out all these characters early in the open world game because we have these Gen 1 characters already made. I know a lot of people have been skeptical about how quick this game could be built, but if we're using pieces from the first game that can help speed up that process like all the characters, I think that's a, a huge deal and a lot a, a big time saver. So it's really awesome to see that they can actually start integrating characters and checking out how objects and things work with them inside the game. Now they're going to clean up and organize code. Good. Um, they're always going to have, um, with any of these big gaming companies, they usually have auditors to audit through the code. So it's always nice to see that they're trying to make it easier to read and they're organizing it. Coding player interactions with objects. So again, 
still early, so they're coding um, the interactions with those right objects now. They're just starting model assets and textures. So they're always adding in these assets. They're building the world. And as I said before, assets can be anything from a mountain to a tree to a house. It could be also the fence, right? It could be whatever asset you want it to be, okay? Uh, so they're working on those textures and trying to make them better, right? Design game effects and optimize managers. Good, so they're having some, I, I don't know what they mean by design game effects, does that mean using special abilities? Does that mean me interacting with a door in a house? What does the effects mean? And I don't know what optimized managers mean. I mean, I guess maybe, I, I don't know. I can't speculate on that. Um, optimizing Optimization managers, oh, maybe that just might mean like managing your bags or something like that. Organize the project, good. So as, as we talked about, it's still early, so they need to get things in the proper order and make sure things are, are flowing smooth. Design and produce lifting mechanisms for special gates. Ooh, what does that mean? Is there going to be drawbridges, moats, castles? What what special gates? Is there going to be a special gate for a dungeon? Is it going to be a special gate for a raid? A raid? What is it going to be? I, I don't know. I can speculate all day. Um, I do remember him saying that we might be able to meet up with our friends in the game, a group of us, and battle a dragon. Um, so there's a lot of things out there that are going to be um, I could speculate on for days about. Okay, uh, but let's continue. That's just gates, right? Don't want to overhype a gate, but it's still cool to see uh, that they're working on interactions in the game and stuff like that. And it tells you kind of a little bit more details about it. Implementation implementation of RTV, real time virtual textures. All right, so real time virtual textures. I First, when I saw this, I really didn't know what that meant, and I needed to kind of look up a little bit of information about it, and to kind of give it to you in the best way possible for understanding is that real-time virtual textures are when you really blend in objects into its surrounding for real time. So like if I had put in a rock into or a mountain or something like that into the world, and it was a different color than the shading around it or the surface around it, real-time virtual textures will make that whole thing blend into each other uh, very seamlessly. So you don't see those edges uh, around that object. You just see it blended into the environment, okay? And with that, they can like move around the asset and do stuff like that. So I believe this is mainly for like characters, interactions and things like that and putting those like houses and assets into place where they interact and blend in perfectly with the environment so you don't know a difference between them. I'm sure this is something that's really used on the characters as well while you're moving so you don't see it be like a clunky thing that's completely looks weird inside the game this really kind of makes it so that it looks smooth it's clean and it interacts right with the environment in real time okay so i hope that was helpful in understanding that um it definitely took me a minute to figure out um it's a, 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 but that to me i believe is the gist of it right so let's go to the next thing so incorporation of new biome the swamp. Ooh, so they have a new area called the swamp. All right. Um, I wonder if they were showing us some of those pictures earlier. It might have been the start of that. Um, who knows? But um, let's continue. So the turn-based game, solve inventory problems. Well, do they mean solved? Solve inventory problems? So is there still inventory problems? Um, it's not a bad thing. I mean, that's, uh, there's always going to be things that need to be worked on, but, um, just curious if they meant solve inventory problems, if, if that was something that they were working on and still working on. Um, I am curious about what inventory does mean. We've talked about that. They've, they've had some materials they talked about and things like that. So can't wait to see what this game has in store for us. I know everyone keeps talking about the open world. But I think the turn-based game is going to be a sleeper. Uh, and this one's the eSports one. This is the one they're promoting the most. So 
I, I can't wait to see what the turn-based game has in store for us. Next on the turn-based game. <clears throat> Excuse me. Coding character respawns. Ooh, what is it? Uh, well, we already know what respawns mean. If you do, don't play video games, I'll give you the hint. That means that you die and come back to life. So whatever happens in this game, we have the ability to respawn and come back to get to life in the fight. So whatever they have for this turn-based game, there's going to be multiple lives, obviously, and you get to be respawned in whatever battle or game that they have in store for us. I'm assuming it's going to be a battle because you have to be respawned, right? So that's interesting to see, and I'm, I'm kind of curious of how they're going to do it because they're using cards. They talked about cards. So... Who knows what's to come come with this game? Um, they did say it was going to be unlike anything we've seen before. That's why they couldn't compare it. So that's a that's a this is a good thing. I mean, having cards, seeing character respawns in the next development update is 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 just making my mind wander, and it does make me understand why they can't really compare it to another game now. So. I really can't wait to see what this is. Um, I'm really, I, I am genuinely excited for these games. I know I talk about the token and the price and stuff like that, but I'm if if people who remember me from early and have, have been around the community, you all know that I, I'm really excited for these games, and and I think this one's going to be really fun. Coding games start in process. Now they did mention uh, they have a singer, Dr. Sharon Lyons. That's helping with the theme. So maybe they're coding like the start of the game. Like whenever you open up or launch the game. That's what I'm thinking this means. I don't want it to. I'm hoping it doesn't mean that they're just starting the game. I mean that would make no sense. So I'm assuming this just means like when you open up the game. You are going to have that starting video. And maybe this might be where you might hear that theme music. That Dr. Sharon Lyons was talking about and working on right so this is this is a cool thing to see i can't wait to see what they have in store for us it's going to be so much fun cleaning up code details always solid most gaming companies and most uh legitimate companies out there like to do code audits and things to legitimize their business so cleaning up and making things nice and easy to understand is a beautiful thing. So um, I appreciate hearing that as well. But I think what everyone really is excited for um, is these pictures. I hope you did find this stuff useful, and I did. I think this these updates are amazing. I look forward to them every Monday. It is something that I get excited for. And um, I hope you were able to learn something. I know I did when I started really looking into this stuff. So uh, real-time virtual textures is pretty cool. Um, there are some great videos out there for to watch. But without further ado, let's dive into these pictures. Okay. Oh, God, these things look so good. Every time I see a new one, they just look that much better and better. They, they really talk about how amazing the lighting is in unreal engine 5 and i'm sitting here on a pretty it's not the worst computer but um th these graphics even on my computer are look spectacular and the surroundings that they're building you keep seeing the evolution of it the water textures everything out there just looks amazing um, I, I know this is probably still the early stages because this is the open world game pit footage and the open world comes out next year. So I can't even imagine what this is going to look like final, right? I could just picture like deers or creatures or, or, or other type of things out there just roaming around here. I could see little battles out in the background. Maybe you can have, I don't know how gory you can get into these games and things like that. Maybe you can have a battle in here and you could see coming through the little blood streams later, right? I, I could just see a lot of different types of events that can happen in places like this. And this is just really cool. I love it. I'm really excited for these games. And this is just showing them, showing the showing everyone out there that they really are working 
on this project and aiming for high quality. Now let's dive into the second picture, right? So they've always been starting to show us little bits and pieces of houses. They showed us first, they showed us kind of like a walkway up to a house. Then they showed us a skeleton of a house. And now it looks like they're showing us the start of a community or uh, a, a little village out here, right? We know if we're Vikings, there's a lot of villages in there. So these are some really cool images to see. Maybe this might be an abandoned vid village that was being built that you walk across and you have to do a quest in here, right? It seems very purposeful set up this way. There's a lot of also some unique things in here with the mountain ranges that you can see. The lighting looks spe spectacular. I think that's something that they really want to push. But I'm also seeing something right here, and, and I wonder what this is. And I think this is hopefully not a mistake, but I'm hoping this is like towers to some city. Like I know whenever I watch the movie Thor and things like that, and you talk about Norse mythology and Odin and all that, they had the famous cities of their culture. And maybe this is just a few extra lines and I'm talking about things that aren't really there. But this is fun. This is YouTube and I like to speculate. So hopefully this is something f far in the distance that you could see but can't see type of deal. Right. Or maybe this is just the start of a tree. I don't know. But um, I, as I said, I do like to have fun and speculate a little on that. So there's some cool stuff in here. Also, you might be able to see what is this. I mean, that might just be a little spec that needs to be cleaned up. This is open world games. Uh, maybe this is just, or maybe this is uh, them trying to show us a hint of a potion. No, I think this is just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And uh, I think this is going to be something that's going to be really cool later when it's finished. Okay. Uh, so, oh man, I don't want this video to go on any further. Again, I can always talk about these things for hours. I can really dive in. I really do love this game. I do really love this project and this company. I think they're doing a fantastic job. I did talk about earlier, be patient on the, the partnership. The NFTs, we're, we're really are focusing on high quality. And you could see that in these pictures. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Don't lose the faith, everybody. Okay. Uh, last before I go. I do want to remind everybody there is that MVG giveaway. So make sure you follow me on Twitter and jump in on that giveaway by subbing to this channel. You might get lucky. Who knows? But you don't get a chance if you don't subscribe. So uh, make sure you do that so you can enter in on that giveaway. All right, everyone. Again, I hope you found this to be helpful. I hope you all have a great day, week, month, and year. And until next time.